My name is Ian Much. I'm president of the Motorcycle Action Group. And since 1973, we've been working to protect your rights as riders from political interference as far as is possible. But that is the core of what MAG does. In the 1990s, the European Commission proposed a 100 brake horsepower limit on all new production motorcycles. MAG fought that limit, both here and in Brussels, via FEMA, the European Federation of Riders which MAG helped to form. We argued that the issue was more complex than a simple one of power, and we won. If we hadn't done, none of the bikes you see here today would be in production as they are. And for all we know, power limits might have been ratcheted down a great deal further. Imagine if you had to pay road tax on every box of bits or frame you had in your shed. That was the proposal from the Department of Transport. MAG got involved in this issue and we negotiated and we got the sawn arrangement out of it. If we hadn't got that, then for every one of these that you held, you would have needed one of these. Many towns are now letting motorcycles use bus lanes and now the biggest town of all has opened most of its bus lanes to us. MAG has been lobbying on this for over 10 years. And fortunately, at last, logic and dogged determination seem to be winning the day. We'll continue with our efforts until every bus lane in the country is accessible to motorcycles. One of the issues that MAG has campaigned on for many years is motorcycle theft. And one of the things we've tried to do is to get secure installations like this put in so thieves can't pick your bike up and put it in a van. We've been very successful in that, but you've got to remember to use your chain. Some people do, some don't. When congestion charging was first mooted for central London, the intention was to charge all vehicles with internal combustion engines. Matt got on the case and we argued for exemption on the grounds we are part of the solution to London's congestion and pollution problems. We won exemption. Imagine if you had to pay seven, eight or more pounds per day to bring a motorcycle into central London. A lot of money compared to an annual MAG membership of £25. When the road safety lobby tried to introduce mandatory leg protectors back in 1988, MAG said no. We bought 25,000 riders right here to Hyde Park and blocked Park Lane from end to end. The result was MAG 1, leg protectors nil. MAG members get an 84-page, full-colour magazine by monthly, The Road. The Road aims to entertain you, inform you and empower you. If you ride The Road, you need to read The Road. MAG got involved in the road safety debate nationally because people listen to you a lot more if you address the issues which give rise to anti-bike legislation. We got involved in the Bike Safe campaign has now been rolled out nationwide. MAG's attitude has always been educate, don't legislate. What we've been trying to do is get other road users to look out for motorcycles and we've been quite successful in that and the recent crop of look out for bike adverts which these people have conceived bears testament to that fact. At a junction, look, look, then look again. MAG's critics have long branded us as that bunch of loonies that want to ban crash helmets. Of course, that was never true. But what we do resent is being criminalised for simply exercising choice over an area of personal safety. Essentially, life is all about balancing risks, freedoms and pleasures. That's what motorcycling is all about. And for us, even if it is a little more dangerous, the fun and the freedom and the exuberance of riding motorcycles is worth that extra risk. What MAG stands for is defending your right to enjoy your lifestyle. MAG is the mouthpiece of the riders' movement. We're your voice inside there. We don't just demonstrate on the streets anymore, although sometimes we still do that. In the run-up to the 1997 general election, MAG ran a campaign called Bikers of Voters, and what we wanted was a committee established that we could sit on so that we could have our input at the very earliest stages of discussions about motorcycle issues. When the government got into power, they gave us that committee. There are those who are quick to put down the people who work in that building over there, 
They say they never listen, but it's not quite true. However, if motorcycling is to have a voice and be listened to, then it needs to be an organized, articulate and well-funded voice. The question for you is, do you want to be a part of that voice?